Not really, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, uh, dig it out. Yeah, but the frame is sitting on top of it, Ted. I can move the moose angle. Okay. Well, you know what? I think this angle would be nice, too, if I slide yeah. this chair. Can you slide that chair? Yeah, he's a little bit. Steer, come forward in the chair a little bit. So okay. Put your butt up. There you go. Good. Yeah, you were lean. That chair is like that. It leans back. Now. Yeah, well. You like it lean back? How, how are you comfortable lean back? No, yeah, not all that uncomfortable. No, it's not uncomfortable. That's a well-worn chair. See, you know. Yeah. I'm filming you. <laughs> yeah. When did you leave Rumford? 1932. I joined the Army. I went to Vermont. I was, uh, originally I had thought of going to Hawaiian, Hawaiian Islands to, uh, well, I can't remember the name of the the fort out there, but uh, I had friends out in Hawaii, and I was going to go join them. But there was no openings that that particular month. And when I asked him uh, where there were openings, he says, "Well, we got a couple of openings in Vermont in a field artillery or the cavalry, and I liked horses, so I says I'll take the cavalry." And uh, that's where I landed for three years. Now, where was that? In Vermont, Fort Ethan Allen, Vermont, uh, n not too far from Berlin, uh, Burlington. And what did you do on the horses? Oh, we trained. Uh, we trained the old-fashioned way, uh, s sabers, <laughs> and, and but. Uh, it, the, uh, the cavalry was really beginning to be phased out. So uh, uh, by the time I'd uh, spent my three years in uh, cavalry, uh, they were beginning to phase, uh, they, they really phased it out right after I got out. So there were no more horses? Uh, there was, uh, yeah, there was, oh, when I left there, they still had uh, two barnfuls of horses. Uh, each barn held about a hundred horses apiece, and uh, the field artillery had had bigger horses, uh, and they lived. Uh, they they were a separate separate unit from uh, from the cavalry. What did they do after the horses? Did they stop the cavalry? Uh, they uh, they mechanized. They uh, they got rid of the horses. And they uh, started to go to uh, trucks and tanks and such as they are today. And then what did they call it? Uh, the mechanized cavalry. Still do, I think. And what year was that? Well, I would say that they uh, phased it out. Out of, out of 40, uh, from 40th and Allen, I would say that probably in 19... 37, 38. Please stop jumping on that because it's bouncing the camera. Got discharged in 30, 36. And uh, I would say that they, they really phased out the cavalry, got rid of the horses, and probably went to tanks and um, weapons carriers, uh, trucks and the likes uh, after that. Under Hill, Vermont. Did the cavalry move around? Yes, we used to go. This used to be our uh, our uh, a camping area. We used to go out on maneuvers up there, and you can see we used to set up our tents there and uh, uh, stay at, at Under Hill. There was a farm not too far from there, and after we get through our day's training, we used to go to that farm and. Uh, uh, she, uh, the lady would sell us a strawberry shortcake, great big piece of strawberry shortcake for 25 cents. So, needless to say, she had a, she had a, a line of soldiers there practically every night. Uh, for the strawberry oh, oh, you still? <laughs> I thought you was gone with the, with the kids. <laughs> Yeah. No, Daddy took them. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's uh, 
that's the tents that the pyramid tents that we, we used to have pup tents, but uh, for that we carried on our pack on the horses. But these was uh, these tents were pure. Uh, what did they call those? Uh, uh, pyramid type tents, and they slept six. So we that's that's where we uh, where we stayed. This this was taken. I can't read that, but. Uh, Allen in August 1934. In 34, yeah. yeah. That, uh, Daddy took another one here and cried. Uh, did you have another one? Okay. Yeah. See, this is uh, the kitchen, uh, the kitchen, and the all the men in line to uh, have their dinner. Or breakfast, whatever, whatever it might have been. This was also taken in Underhill from uh, uh, in Vermont, in uh, at Underhill. And what did they usually cook you for food? Oh, we had good food. That is, you know what it cost us to, uh, at the time the uh, thirty-two cents a day. It would feed a soldier a real good diet, and uh, we have pork chop, beef and bacon and eggs. We had a good diet. Well, I had a hat on. I wish I could point it out to you. I, I, I readily show it to you, but uh, uh, I can't pick it out anymore. But I remember those pictures being taken, and I've had them hanging around for many years. As, well, other, and there's a two-holer there that you, you used to uh, uh, go to the toilet. What does a two-holer mean? <laughs> Two holes cut in a board and set over a hole and you, uh, you use it as a toilet. They usually had, it was usually two holers. And I, don't, I can't remember ever seeing any more than two. Uh, I, yes, I did, in the Army. When I was, we were on the firing line, they used to have uh, a number of holes. We'd get off the firing line and uh, had to go to the, the toilet. There we went. It was a, a tent and uh, uh, probably a six-holer. What's a firing line? Well, where we, uh, we shot, the, uh, learned to shoot the rifle. Oh, okay. This was out in the country, so there was no facilities to go to the toilet. And they had to, they had to provide uh, a place for the men to go to the toilet. So they, they made, uh, they dug the trenches there and built uh, uh, a two-holer or a three-holer or whatever over the hole. And how, did they just then move it and fill it with dirt or did they have to That's clean? correct, yeah. Uh, after you use it, uh, after the, uh, the shooting season had ended, they would uh, uh, bury that, and the next year, when uh, uh, they'd use another area. Did it get smelly in the summer? It was pretty terrible in the summer. They'd stop for lunch and have lunch, and then we'd have to go, say, go to the toilet, and we'd have to use those two holers. They not very, but they they did the best they could with. They put chemicals there. Uh, to try to kill the smell, but the sun was hot, and it was hot, and it it, it was a very pleasant uh, place to uh, to be. In camp, we had the when we was at Underhill there, we had the same facility: outdoor, dig a trench, put a tent over it, and build build uh, uh, the facility to sit down and. Uh, Go to the toilet. And how did they do the cooking? They had special stoves that they, they carried with them. We used to, while I was in the cavalry, they used to send a wagon with a four, a four a mule team with the, all the kitchen supplies. And they'd start off, they'd feed you your breakfast, then they'd pack up everything and take off and go to the... Uh, our next destination, which was probably 20 miles away. 
And they'd get there and they'd set up the kitchen again, a tent and uh, portable stoves. And they, they did, did a pretty good job of cooking. How often did you move with the cavalry? How often I How did... How often did you have to move to different camps? Oh, this was just a door of maneuvers during the summertime that we moved from one area to the next. When we was at the 40th and Island, we stayed put. We had permanent buildings and permanent barracks and permanent stables for the horses. But in the summertime, when we went out on maneuvers, we, we had, uh, we'd move from one, one area to the next. I, I can remember going from uh, Lake Champlain, New York, we we got on we piled all our horses onto the onto a ferry. We we rode out to uh, for, uh, Champlain and took the ferry there and crossed over into into New York. And we went to Camp Drum there uh, in New York, Upper State New York, and maneuvered there. And then came back uh, two three weeks later, took the same ferry back back into Vermont, and back to 40th and Allen. What were the maneuvers? Uh, that's what I mean. Uh, maneuvers was uh, tactics of war, uh, how to go about to defeat your enemy. Uh, horse cavalry was really uh, behind the times. But they, like I say, they were big. Not while I was there. The only thing that modernized that uh, while I was still in there, was uh, that they bought a brand new Ford truck, panel truck for the kitchen. It would it would uh, facilitate the kitchen moving from one area to maneuvers, you know, uh, to to another, and prepare when we get to care uh, in camp that night. Our supper would all be prepared. We took care of our horses rubbed them down, took the saddle bridle off, put them on the picket line, and fed them, uh, fed them a portion of grain and hay, and then, then we ha went to eat. Uh, we never ate until our horses were rubbed down, and uh, we rubbed their legs down. They, they'd been ridden for 25, 30 miles that day. So they were uh, hot on hearts. Then we'd rub their backs and brush them down and so they'd be nice and clean. Then we'd water them, feed them, and then we'd go and wash up ourselves if we weren't too tired. And sometimes we didn't wash, uh, but we went and had our supper anyway. Now the kitchen people, you said they originally took a wagon? Yeah. Uh, with four to four mule or four horses usually, and they had all the kitchen utensils in there, and they had to travel before. Sometimes they got to camp after we got there, and we had to wait for supper. But when they once we got the, that Ford truck, uh, they they had everything arranged that the the stove, the uh, portable stoves that they had, and. Uh, Pan, pots and pans, they'd pile it onto that truck and they, they would be uh, to our next uh, maneuvers, uh, our next uh, uh, camping area long before we were and they could prepare a good meal. Was that the first mechanical thing they got for the cavalry? Yes, that I can remember is, was that truck. After that, uh, I... Uh, I can't tell you just exactly when they started uh, uh, making a bigger move, but uh, they did phase them out right after that. Because uh, there was a period of, uh, from the time I got out, till 1941 when I went back in, uh, World War II, that, uh, that's the time that they, they really uh, modernized the cavalry. And did they have running water at your barracks at Fort Ethan Allen? Oh, yeah. Oh yes, we had uh, uh, all the facilities, nice to toilets. Uh, yeah, we had good, uh, good uh, 
barracks there, nice brick barracks with a, a great front uh, veranda, a porch, and uh, it was uh, quite, now I think they've turned it into, uh, well, old people's homes and uh, different, uh, they've, uh, has nothing more to do with the Army. I guess the, the Army turned that over to the Essex Junction, or where we were closest town, and they, they modernized it and made a uh, home. There was a lot of homes there for officers, but oh, we had big barracks today. And with that... You going to bed, dear? No. So you're just giving me a bonus. Yeah, that's all. You can, oh, let me smell you, dear. One more bonus. Give him a kiss. Oh, I can smell you. Yeah, she's, she smells good. Can I have a kiss? Ah! Give Uncle Fear a kiss. Yeah. Give him a kiss. Yeah. Give me a kiss. <laughs> no, no kiss. A hug. Ah, okay. A hug. Yeah.